All right, guys, welcome to the new and improved version of the Impact Podcast. My name is Jeff Welsh. I'm your host, and this is the podcast where we talk about all things related to social media, targeted advertising, things of the nature that we do here at our digital ad agency in Morgantown, West Virginia. We focus very heavily on how we can actually help businesses uh, increase their brand awareness online and how they can better convert prospects into raving customers. Again, my name is Jeff Welsh. I'm your host of the podcast. This is a reboot. We did this a while ago, but we're starting we're starting it over again. We're trying to do something new and refreshing, something that's beneficial and valuable that we can, you know, put out there in the world to help, you know, our customers and prospects and things of that nature let them better know what we do as a business and try to help them improve their business online. Today, I want to introduce to you somebody that's very special to us here at the agency, to my business partner, Luke and I. Luke is not here in the podcast, but he'll be in a future episode. Somebody that's been with the company for a really long time. At this point, I've lost track of how long and and, uh, I don't really remember business without this individual. He's been here for a long time. He's now a true leader in the company, a good friend, my buddy, Mike Hutchins. How you doing, Mike? Hi, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's actually nine years, but it'll be 10 in September. I knew it was getting close. I like to saying 10. I know. I, well, see, honestly, I was going to say 10 because I <laughs> it's that close to 10 years. Sure. Um, but gosh, yeah, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah. You were a young lad when you came here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm in my 30s now, and I was in my early 20s. You know, that's how 10 years works. <laughs> Getting old, you know, a little you, girl now, all that good stuff. A lot of a lot of things happened to you since you've been here. Yeah, you were you were still in. Let, let's learn a little bit about Mike here first before we dive into things. But like you were you were still in college, if I re- remember correctly. Yeah, I started my internship um, my senior year of college uh, okay. when I was 21 uh, in September of uh, 2014 and I graduated in 2015. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Long time ago. And I, if I remember, were you even married at that point or were you, you and no, Tasha still dating? At I got, time? yeah, I got married, uh, like six months after I started, like the early of the next year in March of right. the next year. Um, I started with you guys in September. I got married in, uh, in March. Yeah. Gosh. And now your dad, yeah, Molly, Molly's goodness gracious. She's six, four. I was going to say four. See guys, I can't even, I can't even yeah. keep track of time. That's how fast it's gone. Yeah. It's a long time, man. A long time. So you've actually been with us longer than the only other person that has been in business, been in this business with me longer than you is my partner, Luke. And like I said, he'll join us on future episodes and stuff. But um, gosh, have you know, have we changed over time? Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. You know, <laughs> the beginning, it was a lot of shoot from the hip type of stuff. Uh, now we have like a lot of processes and a lot of things, a lot of formalities. We have an employee handbook and all of these things that, that real companies do. But, um, you know, back then it's like uh, all the, you know, sort of employees that weren't owners, we were all working from the same office. And that office room was smaller than the room that we're just recording a podcast in that we kind of set to the side <laughs> for that now. So it's definitely been a lot of growth. But a lot, also just like the scale of clients we work with, and yeah, everything's changed, and you know, in that amount of time, it's been really interesting to like start with like almost barely more than a hobby for you guys into like a full fledged you know, multi million dollar business that you guys have now. So yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. It's really when I sit and I think back, you talk about the room, and 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 he's right. Is it was it was a small space, and at the beginning of the agency. You know, we we uh, worked very closely with uh, West Virginia University and bring on interns. Again, that's how we found Mike. He was an intern and then eventually came on board part time and has been here full time for a long time. But I mean, I, I sit and I look back at how much we've evolved, because in the beginning, as a lot of businesses, young businesses do, you, you're just striving to kind of find your groove and what you're special at, or at least that's how it was in the early years of, of impact. I know that we did a little bit of everything as kind of like an overall arching agency, but now, and actually it has been for a very long time, I'm we willing to say at least six to seven years, like we focus very specifically in one area. 
And we can go over all the specific services here in a little bit, but just you know, from your perspective, from the early days to now, what what would you say is our specialty here at Impact and what we do for our clients? Oh, definitely e-commerce. I mean, I know that that's a broad thing, but you know, we started out, we were doing some e-commerce, but we did things, you know, for more local businesses a lot. Uh, informational websites, we were big in the websites where we would do organic posting on social media. But eventually what we discovered is what we were really good at, especially uh, as we've evolved in the team, um, we've all been really interested on the e-commerce side because it's just, you know, money in, money out, you know, creating creative like videos and images and also like it's creative strategy around marketing those scaling businesses from you know basically the owners got you know money and but they're currently making two or three grand a month scaling them all the way to like 30 or more you know like 10xing uh and then 10xing again and stuff and, and seeing uh you know the those businesses lives change and stuff so definitely more so in that like e-commerce life-changing type of like vibe because we all get so much more satisfaction from that than we did from just like you know post something on our facebook every couple of weeks because we can't be asked to like log in and do that um uh, yeah so definitely the ad side yeah i think um what's it when you say e-commerce e of course we don't have our own platform that we built but we work within specifically shopify is our specialty for sure but i think what is really interesting and where we learned that we could help the most and help other businesses scale their brand awareness and convert prospects into customers was in the targeted ad campaign side right and, for sure and i think the key word that everybody should should know and hear is is that scaling scaling businesses out there in the universe that already exist because as you know, we've worked with very small people. I've, we've even done, I've even done business cards and, and brochures and things of that nature in the very early days. But where we're really good and our key talent is scaling um, uh, a company that already has an online presence with a product that is out there in the market selling already. Talk a little bit about the scaling side a little bit more, like where you know, where we focus on that and how we, how we help people achieve that. Yeah. So I'll start out on that question with my expertise, uh, but I'll only spend like 30 seconds because it's so boring, but, <laughs> um, and you know, it's for entertainment too. Uh, but I speak to this stuff all the time. So my, you know, my job within that, you know, uh, thing is to make sure all the data is going through. So, um, you started out back in the day, uh, in the day, I know like, Saying that like makes older people than me think like before 2000 or <laughs> 80s. Anyway, so back in like the 2010s and the early 2010s, like Facebook had a conversion script that you like put on your thank you page. It was literally called the conversion pixel. You know, you had your regular pixel, you had your conversion pixel. And then it evolved into one pixel and you could, uh, it was mainly in browser with JavaScript. And now it's all server side after the iOS updates it's all through the api and the server side so moving on from that because i see like everybody's eyes glazing over <laughs> like ah oh, no server side data stuff so like a big part of what it is is you know we have a guy on our team that does like the videos uh and the images and then our social team does the uh like the strategy behind the you know the 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 uh, the strategy behind the campaigns the two the different types of paid campaigns that we run here and so it's the creative combination of everyone because when we have meetings about what we're going to do for a specific client after um, we understand their product we come up with a strategy together we take so many different people's expertise so you know just for a, a fee of basically what you would pay one employee to work at a place and you get an entire marketing team with such a diverse Thanks. So everybody has a say in how things are scaled. Um, you know, from the web guys to the video guys to the social people, you have all of these different perspectives. Um, and we have enthusiasts of different like niches that we work in and stuff. So we always have like an in-house expert as to like whatever client we're doing. So not only do we have that in-house expert, we have those out of out of the box, you know, thinkers that do that. So we have all these different opinions that come together and we make both the strategy and the creative. And then we test a bunch of different stuff. 
Um, and I think a big part of like what makes us successful is we really take the time to do two things, to get to know the business owner and to get to know the product. Because what I, uh, when I'm leading those meetings, me or uh, our communications director, whenever we're doing that, we want to be as much of an expert on their product as their top sales guy, if they have a guy that does cold calling. We wanna pretend like we're gonna cold call somebody that's interested in your product or we have to sell it at a stand, could we sell it to someone else, like physically, in person? And if we understand the benefits of the, of the product to that level, we can optimize the website, we can optimize the campaign, we can do all that stuff from beginning to end exactly what the client would do if they had all those skills. Mm -hmm. And that's the key mm -hmm. thing, is we need the client to trust us to do what they would do if they had our skills. Um, so yeah, I think that's what, really sets us apart and makes clients like stick with us for so long because we take the time to understand that stuff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that is one of the things that makes us very unique, right? Like we have, we have a small team, right? So there's my partner and I included, there's nine of us here at impact. We've, we've been much larger than that, but after COVID we scaled back down, but we have a very tight knit, close, talented, um, upper level educated team that really streamlines and works extremely efficient together and able to do exactly what you what you're talking about. As you guys can see, Mike can talk about all different areas. What you he hasn't told you yet is he's technically came on as a web developer, so he can get he started to go into like that little scripting mode there a little bit, but he's right. very knowledgeable about everything that we do from from literally creating the product to selling the product and executing. Right, I've had at least one work week where I've done every single job here. Yeah, for sure, you've done everything but pay the bills. <laughs> but yeah. in that fall, every job that doesn't <laughs> fall on ownership, I should say, because well, I've done the cold calling from the sales you, team. You have. I've run campaigns. I, did, I, I used to do our Google campaigns when yeah. we first started doing that. Okay. Um, you know, I've done video content, image content. You know, I've been the second guy that helps like film the stuff. I've edited the stuff together. Um, so definitely, I'm, uh, I would call myself with the company the Swiss Army Knife guy. I kind of fill in the, the gaps. Um, I go through and, and do that, especially if there's a problem. If right. there's either a problem, even when the communication director you know might have one or the, or, or you know whatever, or if they need to defer a decision because you know uh, we, we definitely have layers of leadership here to where you know we don't want everything to get you know to you guys because you guys got to focus on what you do. So yeah, that's my role here um, and all that. Yeah, for sure. So it's um, yeah, I mean it, it's really interesting, and I think that's why. I'm, it is why Mike is a leader in the company. He under my partner and I, he's the next one down because he's had his hands in every aspect of the business. He thoroughly understands this business almost as well as my partner and I pretty daggone close. And he, he truly does care. I mean, and so being able to understand the business at that level gives him an excellent opportunity to be able to lead others and lead the other leaders within the team so that we can do our best for, uh, for our actual clients and customers. Let's talk briefly. Now, I don't want to get too in depth because guys, the whole purpose of this episode is for us to kind of reboot and launch something that we had done in the past and just give you some idea of what we do as a company here at Impact. I, w I don't want to go off on the rails on each air different area of the company because I, I want a sp specific episode to focus on each of those. But we'll talk about briefly about our, our team. So like we have lots of different teams here, several different teams here, even though we're a smaller company. And so first we have like we have the social media team because they're they're the heart of the ad campaigns. Talk a little bit just in brief about our social team, who we have here and what exactly their responsibilities are. Yeah, so the, the social team, uh, do you want me to talk about the specific individuals? I mean, you, we don't have to, we're going to meet them in person on, but you can just introduce their name and what their responsibilities are. Yeah, so we have Allie and Kaiser. Um, Allie does, uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the Facebook marketing stuff. Um, you know, she's, she's, really good at it she's she's uh has a master's degree in it she yeah she runs a lot of that on the marketing team and then you have kaiser who does uh a lot of google stuff a lot of emails and some facebook stuff um and it, 
they they just kind of divide the workload. I think they both do both things, but like they divide the workload between them depending on what they're both good at. Like if a client comes in and they're a certain fit for one of the two, then they'll mm-hmm. just kind of delegate it between the two of them. Um, and yeah, so um, they they both do a lot of optimizations. Uh, ping, they'll ping me if they need to do an optimization, but they don't have it. For example, if they need like a data feed for a Facebook catalog, you know, where you take your products and you want to be able to swipe with your thumb and like see the actual individual products. That's a type of Facebook ad that requires some setup, that requires some data to push over there. So I'm the one that makes it available so that they can click the buttons and, and put it in there. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, um, so there's only two. We have live two people at the moment uh, on our social team. And like Mike mentioned, they kind of have, they both have the skills, skills to handle all of the different aspects of the ad campaigns and the email marketing. But they are kind of separated in who like is responsible for what. So Allie would be responsible for the targeted social ads and, and Kaiser's the Google PPC stuff. But what I love so much about our team is, is that they both are really good in their specific areas, but they work collaboratively. So if we have a client that is running targeted Facebook ads and they're also doing Google PPC and they're also doing email marketing, the two, because we're so small and they're so close, like they're kind of integrating and working together so that right. each of those campaign, all, all of those campaigns work in unison to scale up the conversions as, as best as possible. I think that's what we definitely have um, as a unique aspect because I know you know, these things take time, uh, the bigger, you know, your, the team is. And because our team is a little on the smaller side, we're able to just come, everybody knows everything about every client, like truly, like even if it's not primarily my client or it, someone else's client, we all are in those Slack channels. We're all abreast of like what's going on. We talk about it all together every day. Every client gets talked about by the entire production team at least once a week. Uh, like, so that way we all have updates and that way, if we hear somebody's doing something that one of us disagrees with, we can, you know, hash that out. Or if one of us has an idea or, or we see another person struggling, oh, this thing isn't working. I don't know what to do about that. And it's like my expertise, I like, come in and be like, oh yeah, you can solve that easily. There's never any of those moments where somebody in our team could know if they didn't know, if they knew everything they could solve the problem. Um, we're all knowledgeable about everything with the clients. So we, you know, you're basically getting an entire huge marketing team for the the price of one employee, uh, if you get us. So, yeah, Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's where for sure. That's what I was going to point out was, I think that's where we bring massive value for our clients is, is, and, and we've had people that have, um, decided to, to move on and try to do it themselves. And, or we have people that don't come on board because they think uh, they've got a marketing person on board that can do it all. But I'll tell you something right now, I've been involved in creative for three decades and we've, I've been owned this business with my partner for over 11 years or 11 years at this point. It's impossible for one person to be able to handle all the responsibilities that our team uh, takes on and gets the incredible results that they do. I, I truly do believe that. Like, I don't think it's it's possible for one one human being to be able to 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 run ads, to to, to handle the Google, to build the website, to write right. the emails. Not it's to the same level. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculously different. Yeah. I don't, I just don't think that they would be able to get the results. So that's one of the things I pride myself in is building such a talented team that works so well together at such and gives such massive value for the, the service that we provide. So, all right. So that's the, that's the social team. We talked briefly on them. And again, we're in future episodes. We'll talk, we'll dive deep and, and meet those individuals and talk about those topics more. But we've talked about the social. We've talked about the email a little bit. Talk a little bit about, talk about our web team and SEO. Yeah. Um, so, and CRO too, if you would and like. C- and CRO um, actually meant Yeah. CRO. So our web team, we, uh, we, we do huge projects. Um, we, we have a different process for each one, each client. What makes us, I feel like different um, is we we pretty much give the client whatever they want on the website. Um, 
you know, we will give them a price that um, they can, you know, get pushed through, get signed and all that. And then we really over deliver. I feel like uh, we, we give them more than we promise them every single time. And uh, every time, especially because 99% of our web projects are e-commerce based. We have tested over 1 million users on CRO, like truly. A million um, users? Yeah, we've tested over 1 million total I users. I didn't even point. realize it Yeah, we just passed it because um, like from all the tests combined. Okay. Now some of those, because of the niches that we work in, could be visiting multiple sites. God, no, I don't log IP addresses and cross-reference that. But I'm saying if you take a look at all of our experiments right. and all of the users that we've sampled, what we do on CRO, is we create split tests. So it's like, I don't just tell you, Jeff, that um, I think this is gonna be better for your e-commerce website. We don't do that. We What we do is we I, I say, I have an idea as to what I think is gonna be better. And then I test that idea. A, like a, some, like original, a scientific hypothesis, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I always call it. it. It really is. It's a hypothesis as to what I think is better. And then I prove it with data or I prove against it. And if I'm surprised by it, um, if I'm like, wow, I really thought that would be better, I can explain my reasoning and I can say, okay, well, the original one, so we're obviously we're not going to change that code on the live production of the website. So what can we learn from that and how do we make a test next time that blows the doors off of it? You do that enough. You do that long enough and your website becomes much more efficient at converting customers. Uh, and at the scale of clients that we work with, it is it is like a better ROI than almost anything else you can pay for. Because it's like, is it, in order to do this in reality, in real life, not in e-commerce, not on the internet, but in like a real physical store, you have to have so much more. Like, how do you think they figured out, for example, to put the milk in the back of the store? I love giving that as an example because everybody knows that. It clicks with everybody. Right. Everybody knows that they put the milk in the back because you buy more yeah. if you have to go past it, right? Somebody figured that out through t having one store one way, one store another way, and makes like actual human beings change the layout of the store and test that against two markets that are really similar. But it's never perfect because it's gotta be two different stores in two different areas. Mm -hmm. But what I can do digitally is I can say, when you hit the website, you have a 50% chance of getting that original, 50% chance of getting my version, and then instantly test. So I can do the work of entire teams would have to do to a physical store by myself digitally on there instantly. Um, and that's what makes it so powerful. Like everybody should be doing that. That's an e-commerce website um, because it, it just makes your website so much more efficient. And also last thing with that, and I'll, I can no, tell you. No, you're, you're good. You're I just good. get you're really good. passionate when it comes to CRO because <laughs> it's so much fun. But whenever you do that, like because we've done it for a million users, like I'm kind of circling back and, and finishing that, you learn a lot about commonalities, things that always win. Um, and I don't give all of those away because that's like information that I've learned from that. But sure. I, what I will share with every single person listening to this, especially for listening to it this long, what I've seen every time win, as an example, is sticky add to cart on mobile. That's my go-to example. But like, if you look at a heat map of your website and only 70% of people are seeing the add to cart button because you have to scroll a little bit and it's below the fold, uh, as in like it's below like your phone when the web page loads, you will get a significantly less conversion rate because people can't um, impulse buy as easily. Yeah. You would think, oh, if somebody really wants my product, is it really that big of a deal to scroll for one second? No, that's why the uplift isn't like, it's not gonna double your revenue overnight if you do sticky add to cart. Right. But it, it's literally just free money. Well, it's, it's on the table. It's Boom. just, it's, it's just um, so there you have it guys, it's sticky add to cart. I knew he was gonna, I knew he was gonna bring that that's up. That's my favorite that's, one that's Mike bring it's, up. It's, it's just, yeah. you can tell he's super passionate about his work, but I'm just curious, cause I don't think I've ever asked you this, but like, out of the people, so it just makes sense, right, to run CRO, CRO, guys, if you don't know what it is, conversion rate optimization. So basically we're testing on the site to see what performs better. Of the people that come to us, how many people do would you guesstimate, like, 
are familiar with that or have even taken any time and effort to like, you know, optimize their store. Almost zero. That's what I Almost thought. Almost zero. In fact, when I present this to others, um, they, they're like, that makes so much sense. There has to be a catch to that. Right. There really isn't. It's just something not everybody can do because you have to, you have to have a lot of uh, skills like in mm -hmm. order to do it. And I'm not saying that to like brag on me. I'm just saying, let me list off. Like for example, you have to understand the product to a an intimate level. You have to know web development because you have to be able to code a split test or at least the software to stuff. do it. Like because you have to be able to code a new functionality. Mm -hmm. It's not just the sticky add to cart. You might have to test the new complete functionality that you hand coded and then also wrap all that JavaScript in a thing. Yeah, so there's like, you have to have the practical knowledge of the product. You have to have the ability to do web development to fully utilize it. You have to be, have a practical business-minded like brain or mentality, not just like an abstract understanding of code, but the type of person that is like kind of entrepreneurial that can see where this fits in the market, understand it and actually like sell it to someone. Because like, I would say like not a lot of web developers are extroverts or people who can, and I wouldn't call myself an extrovert, but like people who can sell something and I can totally sell our services by myself on a phone because I'm just passionate about it. Like I've done it a, a few times by myself. And, and the reason is because like I kind of understand the way that other people think and shop and buy products. Right. So there's a lot of like right. boxes you have to check to do CRO effectively. And that's why I, I'm really proud of the, the web team that we have here because we always deliver for our CRO clients 100% of the time because we take the time to understand the product. And you can't fail if you do that and you have enough users, you must like provide value by doing it because if you test and you iterate and your iteration wins, that's that's value forever. Mm -hmm. That's not just value during the test. That's value forever because the website is now that much more efficient at converting customers. I think um, before I lose a thought because I have something I want I want to share with folks. But um, as, again, as you can so CRO, you understand what the concept is and one of the services we provide here and why it's so important. But here. I want to expand upon the why, like why it's such a big deal and why it's something that we try to lead with. So, and Michael, Michael, fill in the gaps and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, years ago, before we did the CRO service, we were just driving traffic, right? Because that's, that's essentially what we do. We help drive the right traffic to your online store to convert a prospect into a customer. But there was a time where we would drive so, so much traffic, but the conversions were not high. And part of the reason we were having challenges during that time yeah. period, it was is that, okay, we're spending all this money on ads and all this traffic, but nobody's converting. Yeah. Well, the reality of it was we had an aha moment. We realized that their, their store was broken. Yeah. Like we had several clients that, and, and it's not because we built, we didn't build the site, I guess is what I'm getting at. They brought yeah. us the site. They said drive traffic to it. We drove traffic that to it. That used to be a huge problem. Yeah, because they'd get to the de the detail page of a product and it was just like mm -hmm. they wouldn't, it would just bail off or whatever. Right. But that's why now, so I guess what we're getting at is we want conversions to be as high as possible, but we don't want... We don't. We also don't want to waste our our customers' money because at the end of the day, they're paying for our prof our professional services and they're also paying for the traffic to go right. through. However, so that's why it's so important to take care of the CRO stuff first, even if it's one or two things. Yeah, and it also makes it so we can win bids against competitors. Because for sure. If yeah. Most most of our clients have competitors. There's yeah. like obviously barely any like monopolies in niches mm -hmm. um so when somebody comes in if their website is twice as effective or even 50 percent more effective than most of their competitors if not all of their competitors at converting customers that means they can bid more on advertising and that means they can grow 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 and that's, that's how we sure. scale that's why we do everything from beginning to end that's why we fix the website that's why we do mm -hmm. like everything from from uh, first touch of the customer to the purchase we control because 
Therefore, like there's no variables that would prevent us from getting results. We can't blame it on the client's website because it's part of our process now. Right. Um, a so, process. Yeah. A process is the right word. We have a process. We have a, a set process that we've developed and built over the course of a decade trial and error and and just testing and testing and testing until we've perfected it and that's why we're able to take um clients who literally are not converting much to uh, we had uh, we won't get into some results today but we did have a crazy one 43x return on ad spend here in just like less than a week which was unheard of yeah that was at launch like you said that less than at, a week yeah and that means they're going to be able to rapidly scale right. their ad spend and i cannot wait i cannot wait <laughs> <laughs> to see this client grow because yeah. they're so they're such nice people. Yeah. I love I love it when people sign on for us and we get to like literally change their life. Like uh, by that, I'm not promising we're going to be able to do that for everybody, but like that's what I want to see yeah. for every well, that's, client we bring in. That's the it's that's so the end, that's the end game result, right? Like we're here to help. You know, you say change their life, but like in it's some fun. ways it is like. We, yeah. we have we've had businesses that have come to us that are already huge and we just we just scale what we've got but then we've had people that are that are startups and some have been more successful than others but ideally when you when our pros, our clients come to us they're already they've already got a product they've already got an e-commerce store they're already um, solving a problem and selling a product at at a certain volume to where we know that we can actually take it and grow it from there so yeah. We kind of went uh, a little off on the rails on CRO stuff, but that's cool. It's like so you're gonna get that if you invite me. I know. So <laughs> so there you go. You've got like a mini segment of what the CRO episode is going to be like. But in general, we have a web team. The web team consists of of Mike and as well as uh, another um, gentleman, Bijan uh, of ours. And and so we it's small, limble, uh, nimble. Uh, I actually come from a web background myself. I don't really do any of the production work anymore, but I can talk, have intelligent conversations with the team about that type of work. So web design, development, CRO, and uh, SEO. We didn't really talk about SEO, but we do a little bit of that as well. And then the next team that I kind of want to introduce uh, to is our, well, our team, I should say. It's really one main guy. And then we all we all generate and can build content, but we have a key player. Who is that? Oh, his name is Josh, and he's he's a legend. <laughs> he's so good at what he does. Well, what do you mean he's a legend? He's a legend. <laughs> I just mean like uh, I really love his content. I'm always the one that's like, I mean he's he's my good buddy. But uh, you know I didn't know him obviously before he started at Impact. But his content, like that's that's a cornerstone of like what a lot of what we do is like you know we don't we don't just like crap out content like we make really good stuff that people continue to use for years uh you know after we make it because it's you know it's either animated or you know if he's going in person it's well lit or if they ship us products then it's just to a level that is insane it looks like an entire team did it he's like a one-man yeah. army uh, i really like his design stuff and I think that's a really good way to to put it. He is he's he's the silent one man army. Like Josh, you probably will never, you may never meet Josh other than maybe if I'm lucky enough to get him on this on this an episode of this, and um, you will, and and we'll pull some stuff out of him. But he's just a super talented individual that comes and creates. When we say content, we're talking specifically about the graphics and the animations. We have local clients where we actually send him out to do the shoots. Um, he's shooting this here today. Actually, he set the stuff up and disappeared. So we're just talking to the walls right now and each other. But then he comes back and he he puts it all together. He makes our short whiz bang videos and our longer form stuff. So super talented guy. And the other cool thing too is is that when he gets overloaded we have resources where we can outsource and so josh has been with us for a long time i'm getting to a point where i do remember previous video guys and i can name them i can name two of them and but they're but uh but he's been here not as long as mike josh and ali have been here about four five maybe six years I, i've lost track at this point ali started two weeks before Panda. Four. Uh, Josh is maybe a little, little years. Four, yeah. And Josh is more like six. Yeah, he's been here a while. Yeah. Allie started two weeks before pandemic and then was sent home to work and has never come back into the office oh, yeah, permanently. Josh, Josh did start around the same time yeah. my daughter was born. 
Yeah. That's how that's how I can remember it from now on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd, I'd never put those two things together, but so that's that's our that's our content team, and so of course then there's my myself and my partner own, ownership, Luke Nestler, and then we also have a sales team as well. So. Um, those are the individuals that reach out to prospects and try to find those individuals that we can definitely help, you know, that are looking for somebody to help them solve the problem that they have. Yeah. And so that in a nutshell is, is who we are as a company. Um, what we do, I mean, we have, we have a solid mission, you know, our mission is really to lead business growth by increase, increasing brand awareness and help convert prospects into customers. That's our main goal. And we have a vision of helping 10,000 businesses over the course of the next five plus years and be able to help businesses who can't figure out how to scale their online conversions and, and business to the next level. We want to come in at and, and be able to help them do that at a reasonable rate and, and just help them get to the, the point that, that they want to go to. Um, yeah. And that's that's pretty much what we have for a team, right? Yeah, and if you've made it to this point, if you've listened to all the way through <laughs> this, you gotta reach out to our sales team. You gotta at least talk to us. Yeah. You know, I, I love uh, you know meeting new people, even, even if somebody doesn't sign on, like I love meeting new people in those prospect meetings and stuff like that, and listening to their uh, their business goals. You know, a lot of times they'll they'll get to know us and you know decide to sign in. So obviously, I'm you know uh, prompting that because I, I really want to uh, you know I really want to see a lot of people from the podcast that already got to know us here. I think it'd be really interesting. Uh, to do that. So. Yeah, I think it's um, when, so when Mike, when you say the sales team, I mean, it is what it is that their yeah. business development sales, whatever you want to call it. But I will, I will say this, like we do not, we do not have a pushy process um, sales team at all. Like we truly are do, do reach out to our, our people and just want to help them out. Yeah. I mean, Obviously, there's persistence there in trying to to communicate and and um, set up meetings and calls and things of that nature. But guys, we'll go to we'll go to the length of actually, it's not uncommon for Mike to come in on a prospect call to just to just to kind of get to know you guys, to get to know who you are, what your business is, what 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 areas we think that we could help in. So. Yeah. Especially when there's web stuff involved, but yeah, I, I for sure I try to involve myself, kind of butt in to everything. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always the guy that's like, let me be part of that. Well, yeah, so uh, so, so, so not yeah. just Mike, but also the social team is very common to come into some calls before people become customers and yeah. and stuff. Because at the end of the day, we want you to kind of know that we want you to trust us. We want you to know that you're coming in with a group of very professional individuals that are really talented and have a track rep record of having success because we've been doing this for a decade and we have had, we show great results all the time. So you can schedule a meeting with us uh, on the impact website. So if you go to thinkimpact.com, there it is. Absolutely. Go to thinkimpact.com and you'll see a let's talk now button. Click that button, click that button and set up a call with us today. So, all right, guys, well, thank you so much for joining us today in the initial reboot of the podcast. We actually, so today, we're in our conference room here at the office. We have a studio that I've been re rebuilding and working, remodeling. Um, so in the very near future, we'll be in, in a new space in a new studio. I'm really pumped and excited about that because it has epic lighting and it's just a really cool space. So, um, but yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for joining us and we'll see you on the next episode. Have a good day. Bye.